Our journey in search of the marvels of India continues through the land of Buddha. My next destination, Barabar Caves in Gaya district. Our journey takes us through picture perfect paddy fields and imposing mountains. Our thoughts suddenly, abruptly end as we turn off the main road onto a bumpy dirt track. The rocks strewn across the landscape in almost impossible formations makes you wonder just what kind of nature went into shaping them. A bouncy ride later, here we are to begin our climb up to the Barabar Caves. The Barabar Caves are just about 25 kilometers from the city of Kaya, so you can hire a taxi or maybe take a bus ride if you're more adventurous to the caves. These caves are massive. When I first saw them, I was awestruck by the simplicity of style and their massiveness. They are the oldest surviving rock-cut caves in India and four in number here. They were built during Ashoka's rule. They formed the setting of the opening of E.M. Foster's book, A Passage to India. E.M. Foster visited the caves and later used it in his books by the name of Marabar Caves. The caves are called Lomas Rishi, Sudama, Karna Chopar and Vishwajhopri. They date back to the 3rd century BC during Emperor Ashoka's times. Of the four, Sudama is the oldest. According to the inscriptions here, the entrance of the cave is crafted in ancient Egyptian style. The inscription inside the Karna Chopper indicates it was cut from a single granite boulder in the 19th year of Ashoka's reign. The interiors are simple, in keeping perhaps with the preferences of the Buddhist and Jain monks who lived here. The exterior of the Lomas Rishi cave though presents a contrary sight. Based on the architecture of thatched huts, the exterior has very fine carvings of lattice work, rows of elephants paying homage to Buddhist stupas. And the local guide opens up the iron grill for us. The interior of the cave consists of two rectangular halls, a bigger outer hall and a smaller inner hall. The walls may be plain, but it's as smooth polished glass, even thousands of years later. The local guide, who is showing us around in the dark caves, completes the mystical experience by chanting Om. And yes, the sound does sustain itself here in a most curious way. The echo of the Om stays for approximately three seconds. Since these caves were excavated for Jain ascetics, the Ajivikas, they were probably carved in such a way that any sound echoes here. So in between the chants, you can hear the echo of the first one before you go on to the second chant. On that auspicious note, the sun begins to set, reminding us that it's time to move on. It is difficult to describe this near spiritual experience of this beauteous place. You have to be here to know it. <laughs> 